New Testament reading today comes from Mark 21 through 43. I invite you to get comfortable in your chairs. And uh, it's on the bottom of page 2, and it's on page 1559 in your pew Bibles, should you decide to read along. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and he pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. And when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. And because she thought, if I, if I just touch his cloak, I will be healed. And immediately her, her bleeding stopped and she felt her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realized that the power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Ignoring what they had said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, Don't be afraid. Just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except for Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And when they came to the home of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and he said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. He put them all out. He took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her hand took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. And immediately the girl stood up and walked around. She was of 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. 
He gave strict rules not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be God. to God. Get up. Can any of you stand up? Try. Some of you get up a little slower, but you all get up. And that's okay, D. You don't need to get up. Okay, you may sit down. Get up. Try it one more time. Get up. Oh, people are starting to fuss now. What do you mean, get up? What do you mean, get up for Jesus? Oh, okay, you may sit down. Isn't it funny how we fuss about the most simple things? Well, As you know, the title of this sermon is Get Up. As the raising of G Jarius' daughter and the healing of the ceremoniously unclean woman are two miracle stories within one another. It was a testimony to Jesus' power over disease and over death. The unclean woman had suffered greatly for years and those who cared for her would have been unclean as well. For all who came to touch her would be unclean. The ailment and culture pushing away all those who would be able to care for her, for now she was desperate. It was the ancient belief that, and even today, that even handkerchiefs or pieces of fabric, aprons, and other pieces of a healer's garment also possessed the powers to heal. So in anguish and in misery, she made her way to Jesus and simply touched his cloak. She gathered all of her emotional and physical strength to move through the crowd. I say emotional strength because she was surely ostracized and shunned and spurned by the community for her ailment. And as we all know, if you are losing blood, your energy is drained from you. How many have lost some blood and felt lightheaded? Anybody? Okay. Well, however, her faith allowed her to get up and to move toward Jesus' saving grace and healing powers. She did not stay put. She got up and made her way through the crowd, even through individuals shunning her. And she moved towards just the possibility of a curative Holy Spirit, the invigorating mending of the body and the soul. But it all started by getting up. And you see, I asked you all to get up just twice, and we heard uh, uh, the second time. So it is hard to get up for Jesus some days, for us mere mortals. Well, she now moved toward Jesus from behind. Now, I have something to say about this. You know, some of us come into the realization of the power of the Holy Spirit from the back door. She kind of snuck up behind Jesus, hoping that the crowd and Jesus wouldn't notice. But having touched the Lord's garment, the woman was instantly 
cured. And Jesus was not allowing her to sneak away without allowing her to fully understand what had taken place at that very moment. For Jesus became aware of the power had proceeded from him and had gone forth in a conscious response to the touch of faith. Jesus elicited from the woman a public confession. For her faith brought her salvation. But she had to get up. Now, I didn't hear or read anything about her whining about it. She'd probably been whining for about 12 years, and she was desperate. But she got up anyway. And then on the same note comes Jairus, whose daughter is ill, and in fact, there had been word that she had already died, and he had fallen to Jesus' feet to ask for help for his daughter, and Jesus tells him not, that she wasn't dead, that she was just sleeping. Sleeping that denotes that there is an awakening at some point. And our human knowledge on the other world of death is very limited. And for one that works with hospice every day, I see fear in the eyes of what may happen on the other side of this life. People's eyes dilate. Their hearts flutter when they are afraid. They clench their hands and they clench their teeth and their feet are drawn up because they are afraid. So our knowledge is limited. But it is within the reach of our Savior's voice. Our dead are safe in his care. Let me say that again from coming off of doing four services last week. Our dead are safe in his care. And our Savior's authority extends beyond the grave. Our Savior's authority extends beyond the grave. So, what does Jesus do? He gathers Peter and James and John and walks to Jairus' home where his daughter lays and he says, Talitha Kum, little girl, get up. How many of us have put our faith on the back burner and then sometimes we gotta come through the back door in order to come to church or to come to Jesus or to come to our knees and leave pride and self-esteem out there somewhere. Well, because of life's challenges, we realize we can't do this life without our Lord and Savior. So sometimes we do come through the back door. We touch the cloak from behind. Maybe Jesus won't notice any one of us who've been far away from him for some time. So let us just touch the cloak and ask for forgiveness. People of God, Jesus didn't crucify Jairus or the woman. He saved them through faith even though they came through the back door. And he told Jairus simply to believe. Isn't that easy? Just believe. But it's the hardest thing in the world to do at times. Especially when we are down and out. It's hard to believe. Now this week, you have noticed in, in the news, a condo fell. And it was in Miami-Dade, and it's called Champlain Towers. And I understand to this morning, there's 159 people 
that have disappeared or are un, they can't find them. So, on my way here this morning, I was listening to the radio. I'm an old fashioned girl listening to the radio. Remember radios? I bet you don't know nothing about radios. <laughs> He's the youngest one in here. I have to pick on you. Radios. And there was a Cuban woman that uh, she said she had a very good job, and I think you do have to have a good job to have uh, afforded a condo in that particular building. She said, I had a good job. And she said, I woke up out of her bed, and she went and she, her, her balcony doors flew open. So she got out of bed, and what did she do? She shut them. And then, all of a sudden, she heard a loud noise. So she went to the front door of her condo, and she looks out, and okay, th there was a few other places, and she goes around the corner, and there was no building. So then she figures, I'm going to knock on the door. She knocks on the door, and a few people answer, and she says, we got to get out of here. And she was able to go down the steps, and she was able to get out of that building. One woman, one woman's testimony. Now, she was in tears because being single, and those of you that are cat lovers, Frank, back in the back, Anybody else a cat lover? Oh, we got a few. Oh, of course. Few, few. <laughs> she left her cat. She left her cat, and she feels guilty. She said, I don't worry about any of the pictures that I just got last week from my mother, and I was going to organize them. I don't care about the little odds and ends that, that the family had from Cuba. I just worried about my cat and I feel guilty. She feels guilty. She left her cat. But in all of the commotion, she got out of there. Thanks be to God. And then she started talking about the miracles of that building, the people in there. She started talking about how nice the people they were and how thankful she was to know them, especially being a single woman. She said she got invited to go ride a bike. She got invited to dinner. People gathered around. They were a family in that condo. And she says she's not sure why she was left. But the miracle is that those of us that were not involved can understand that there are good people out there that there are people loving, people sharing with each other. Now she's a testimony to what happened in that condo as a community. And I won't say community of faith because it, I think it's a community of global faith because there were so many different types of people in the darn condo. Of all Jewish and Christian and all kinds of folks there. And they were all loving on each other. And some of them are gone now. You see, when Jesus said, to leave the coom, get up, what would have happened had she not gotten up? What if she thought, oh my goodness, in my sleep, I'll just shut these windows or doors and then go back to sleep? What would have happened? Sometimes the Lord is telling us, ladies and gentlemen of God, to get up and get out. Sometimes we are to remember who we are in Christ because of what is happening around in the world. Sometimes. Now Jesus knew that someone had just touched his cloak. And the energy came out because of the faith. What faith is that? But I have to say to you, do we all have...
have to bleed for 12 years in order to come to that faith? Does our child have to look as though they are dead in order for us to come to that faith? Do we have to lose another person through this week? All of those folks that we celebrated their life. All of them. Your brother. Your wife. Your mother-in-law. We celebrated them all. And they would have wanted us to know the miracles that has happened in our lives that Jesus moved in that. Can you remember a miracle in your own life? There's a guy in the back row, and if I tears flow, please excuse me, because that man was sick, and you remember he was out. And I came into the emergency room, and he was on one of those neck braces. And the doctor came in talking, as far as I was concerned, smack. And what smack means is nonsense. Because when you love somebody, you know there's a miracle in there. And I could tell that his eyes were trying to flutter and he was trying to fight like Pete is trying to fight right now. And something said, don't let him go. Don't let him go just yet. And I said to the doctor and to his wife who was sitting right there, I said, I think he's fighting. Did I not say it, Jan? Yeah. The man is sitting right there. And he stood up twice. He's a Marine, he's a father, he's a husband, he's a friend, he's an artist, and he's still here because of the miracles of Jesus Christ. So, when Pete says, I don't want hospice right now, that's okay. Because that means he's ready to fight because he's another Marine. <laughs> he's ready to fight. That's okay. And as people of God, we have respect for those that get up and fight. You fight for your life. You fight for what is right. You fight for love. You fight for peace. Get up. Jesus said this. You see the people crowded against you, and his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, who touched me? Serious, Jesus? You want to know who touched you? You see all these people pushing up against you? Serious? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. And then the woman, knowing what happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear. Trembling with fear because we're always worried in ourselves about the repercussions of the truth. Let me just, let me just say that again. We tremble in fear because we are worried about the repercussions of the truth. She wasn't sure what Jesus was going to do. And also, more or less, she was worried about what other people are going to do. Are they going to stone her for being out in public? So she fell to his feet and proclaimed the truth. And Jairus, now I'm sure that man was not used to falling at anybody's feet. Because you remember... He was head of the church, or head of the synagogue. And he wasn't used to, he was a leader. But because his baby was suffering, he didn't worry about pride or dignity or any of that stuff. What he was wearing, it might get dirty, whatever. He fell to his feet and asked Jesus for the life of his child. 
And Jesus said, believe. Just believe. Now, some of you are sitting there, yeah, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. Things don't always work out. Some people do die. Yes, that's true. Some people do die in fear. Yes, that's true. But faith allows one to see through the reality of our own little knowledge heads. Faith allows us to believe that even in the quagmire of sorrow and death and dying, there is hope. Get up. Grab that hope. Because ladies and gentlemen of God, there are miracles sitting all around you. You're one of them. Dr. Frank, Bob is one of them. Okay? You're still here. You, you, I know, you can't get rid of her. <laughs> Thanks be to God. And Sir Holmes, amazing man. You had an amazing woman in your life and you still got her. She motivated every single one of us to be better. That's the miracle. That's the miracle. The miracle is, young man, you are in the process of changing. You can look at your feet all you want to, but you're in the process of changing. The Holy Spirit is working on you, even if you don't like it. So, when things get rough, when somebody looks like they're asleep, just keep praying. When somebody looks like they're half dead, and maybe they don't want to fight for themselves, you can fight for them. Just know that Jesus is with you all the way, regardless of if you're looking or not. Jesus is with you because it's tough right now. Hold on, girl. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.